as well all right guys next day after six hours with brandon yesterday initial impressions keen your first i thought it was really good you know it was a little bit different from some of the lessons i've had in the past i've had a few people that have coached me over the years he kind of explained things in a little bit of a different way maybe that you know he said a, a couple of things that resonated with me that maybe were differently than uh, Smart have explained it. Uh, he also picked up on different things, putting my body in a different position than I would normally want to be, that I thought was was actually helpful in, in a couple cases. I thought one of the things that surprised me with you specifically is you're typically a more come from behind shooter, but you're we're also all a little out of our element here on this orange course of backwoods, just in terms of the speed and distance. Even you start creeping into inserting more in a more maintained style on those targets. I felt like it was a little bit of a surprise for you to realize or even attempt it in such an extreme way as Brandon was suggesting. Yeah, I think so. You learn how to shoot a certain type of target that's probably a little bit closer. So, you know, spending the amount of time that you do with it and feeling it the way you have to coming from behind on something that's 50 yards. It just feels like more of a stretch. So you, you definitely have to adjust to it, right? Um, we're gonna have to figure out a way to set, you know, some targets a little bit more like this at home and try it. Because I don't think one weekend of doing that method is right. gonna get me in. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. So it's really good. I felt like I really got a good feel for some of these shots, but it's many thousands of rounds of practice before I feel comfortable putting this into a competition. I had a, a lesson earlier this year with Brandon and really, I think went through a little bit of the same evolution you did yesterday in so much as he challenged me to use coming from behind in more places than I would have. Like I would do it sometimes, but nowhere near as often as he was suggesting. Well, then I like took it and really ran with it. I made some plan errors and particularly the Northeast regional that I, you know, I now regret because I didn't quite have that balance of when to use it and when not to use it. I just didn't have it in balance yet to yeah. know when, you know, okay, like that fast quartering shot on the hedge, down the hedge row on skulls course. Like that was just a mistake for me at that point to try and come from behind that target yeah. versus collapsing it. And when you're shooting well, like you feel like you can get away with it more, like, but it takes time to get into that balance. You, it was a little different story with you, though, right? Yeah, like much. You, you came into that lesson not really shooting targets from behind ever. 20 or 30 times in my total shooting history, I've shot a target from behind, intentionally come from behind. Right. And yes, absolutely. So, so you, you, I remember you saying at one point, like, well, just treat me like a like a C-class shooter, and let's just let's kind of start from the beginning of yeah. this method. And you kind of threw it out, and we actually started on the green course. Yeah, and and you be, like kind of really began to do it honestly for the first time. Yeah, no, it was. I, I sort of came to this lesson as an Anthony student who typically insert to a lead, maintain, and some feel at the end you break your shot. And I've spent four years doing that, and that's fine. That's a it's a whole system. It's not the only way that people shoot. Um, so when I heard about Brandon, mostly he comes from behind on birds. It was an opportunity for me to say, what is it about this that I can learn? Because clearly, I'm struggling where, with where I am in masterclass, 80% shooter typically. So I'm always willing to say, if there's something you need to be learned, I'm willing to make that sacrifice. So for me, coming to Brandon and saying, you know, I'm a masterclass shooter and blah, 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 I'd much rather say, hey, treat me like you've got a real new, new shoe in your hands. Uh, the process of essentially mounting to the back of the bird, feeling that bird a little more, getting, and basically starting to build my gun control through the back of the bird. Uh, and then essentially pulling away very, very, very slowly in my case, and it'll get faster over time. Uh, I jumped in with both feet and said, I'm just going to do this. I mean, you know, as all Anthony Mattery students, I think we we're all to this framework of multi-method shooting, which says, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to know how to pull away. I'm going to know how to insert, uh, insert. I'm going to know how to, you know, shoot. I want, I need to be able to shoot truly sustained when the situation calls. Yes. And I want to be able to come from behind, you know, and, 
just to be clear, come from behind doesn't mean insert behind and then swing through the target quickly. Right. It means let it pass the gun and then insert roughly on and then and then find the right lead visually. So, you know, I think we all adopt that multi that that multi method framework. And what's great about Brandon is that yeah. uh, he does too. Just where I think he falls on his method selection is weighted much more heavily to coming from behind yes. than say Anthony. Yes. Yeah. Maybe by twice as much, right? Yes. So I think, but where does that come from? I, I think it comes from the fact that he has near mutant level gun control and he can take a short window yeah. trap shot and come from behind successfully versus someone that hasn't practiced that method and doesn't have that level of gun control yet. It's going to take, you know, it, it will take years of experience and practice to be able to do it. So then the question is for guys like us, you know, what are the situations like? How how big of a window and how much speed can can a target have before I can't use this technique anymore? And being able to recognize that outside of the box, you know, and do it and then do it under pressure, that that's the real challenge, right? So like I think you know everyone's going to have to through their own practice and the shooting take this tool and figure out like how it fits into the tool set and when you're going to deploy. Perfect example, we're on or uh, Orange 2 right here. And I step in, I, I see Mike, we're talking this morning and there's a bird that's, in my opinion, absolutely you should probably come from behind. It's a very, very strong crossing bird with a large lead. And there's a bird where I tried the technique that, that I've been trying to use all weekend on the air bird and failing miserably. And it's not, it's just a bird that until you learn that, just isn't suitable for trying to come from behind. It's a, it's a yeah. Well, the the A is a much shorter window, so yeah. like for where yes. you are right now, yeah, it's gonna it's gonna be hard. I can shoot that one comfortably from behind, but I've been chipping away at this now for five. Yeah, minutes. exactly. I'm so. in like not even twenty four hours. targets at, uh, at practice. The Orange course has been amazing. Yeah, I, look, I, I love it. I love coming to practice here because it's just such a different orientation than we have at home. What makes this range unique is the total sheer size of it. You know, there's single fields here that would be two, maybe three fields, depending on yeah. where we are back home. Yep. So they have the flexibility to do stuff that we just don't typically see in the Northeast. So to come out here and get 15 stands of 40 plus yard, very, you know, very intense targets. It's great, right? But I would also say that kind of just like the multi-method shooting thing, yeah. it's just one skill. Like when you come down here to this region of the country, you get a lot of this. Mm -hmm. When you're in the Northeast, you're going to be sh shooting in the woods, yeah. right? And you got guys like Joe Skull that throw very technical things on, on not a tiny range, but nothing that's the size of this, right? right? So he's working with a different thing. So a different style of targets evolve. South Florida, Texas, each have their own styles. I mean, the first time I went to Texas, those black middies in the sky, they, you know, were totally foreign. So it's, it's, part, so, it's part of the answer that black people should shoot to more distant ranges and experience as much I, as they can. I, I think you have to. Like, If you want to be great at the game at a national level, you know, you're going to have to be able to shoot at a regional in any part of the country. Yeah. Right. I still have an experience shooting out west in the desert. I went out to the Clark County shooting complex one time when I was in Vegas just, just with, with my friends. And I mean, like the way the light is and the distance and the sand, like that's a whole different animal. And you've got to travel around and experience all of it if you want to be great at the game. Yeah. Otherwise, otherwise you're just going to have holes. I think one thing that's interesting is we have tree backgrounds in the Northeast a lot, and they have tree backgrounds here and in Florida, and they'll throw sky targets, but the lighting is so different here that they'll put the trap not in 10. 
but it's further out. And it looks like it's the same distance as it is in the northeast, right? So right. a 40 yard trap may look like uh, it's really only a 30 yards to someone who's in the northeast most of the time. Yeah. And the birds look bigger too. They're just lit better. You can see them better. They just look closer. Well, I mean, look, this January, we all went down to Florida ahead of the Florida shoots to practice just to deal with that phenomenon that you're talking about. So, success? Very, very much success. Absolutely thrilled to come down. Love the environment. Love the coaching. Before the lesson, there was a fast quartering target I was shooting. I felt no connection to it. I was hitting it more often than not, but it just, when I hit it, I was like, I don't really, I don't really know how I hit it. I'm looking at the target hard and it just doesn't feel right. And with the way he had me holding a little closer to the trap, spending a little bit more time with it because that time equals connection. Right. Um, I felt really good about that bird. And that's actually a bird I might, I might actually deploy that that method of this competition. I felt that much better about that bird. Right. So that whole the, that holding close to the trap thing is wild because if you don't pair it with doing the right thing with your eyes, yeah. it's a wreck, yeah. <laughs> right? Like you've really got to have out in the field yeah. or out in back soft focus, use the flash and then let it come oh. together. Uh, otherwise that, that you're right, you need the time, but it will come unraveled super quickly yeah i think i think the other thing though that people get tripped up on is you know brandon was shooting targets and then he had me do a couple where i held behind the train yeah just and, exaggerate for practice yeah and i mean the thing is you know someone might say oh that's what are you doing but but the point is is that he's not he's not getting uh scared or nervous that the bird is getting away from him, right yes he is he's still calmly making a controlled move to the bird and that's the thing. It's, you know, it's all about moving the gun at the right speed for what you're trying to do. And I think the problem a lot of people have is that they just they see the bird. They have the perception that it's it's getting away from them and they just like, move the gun with a tremendous speed. And that's probably part of the reason this come from behind could get a bad name, you know, when it's, you know, not deployed properly. No matter what, you're in control. You might be moving the guns faster than you are in other cases, but it's it's still really it's really really good if you do it right. I, I can echo that. I mean, some of, some of my experiences have been with some of these fast quartering out birds. We shoot together a lot. You've seen me shoot, and you've seen me miss a lot of those birds where I've tried to maintain them, and I didn't quite connect, and I chipped them, or I you know trying to do everything correctly, but I couldn't make it happen. Taking some of those techniques that that yesterday, and some of those birds that I was really sort of getting on birds passing the gun i'm getting on the back edge and feeling it, and i'm pulling forward and breaking it and i'm and even if they're getting away and it's taking me a little longer to do that because i'm new to the technique i was hitting those birds really well I'm feeling very confident with it yeah. and i left the box shooting those birds feeling much more confident using that technique than i ever would have using the technique i've been learning for a long period of time so there's a balance I love this notion that you were hinting at, this notion of practicing the things that you're scared of, right? Like when when I when I suggest to people that they should keep a list of the things that the the times and the targets that they were most uncomfortable with out of the box, like that's what you're getting to. Or, you know, you found that last year, you found that John Danaher interview, which I thought was so fascinating, where he talks about John Danaher is an MMA coach. He talks about coaching MMA fighters to teach escapes first so that if you if you're confident that you can escape you're more likely to use the more aggressive move yep. because you know you can get out of trouble if it happens yep. right same thing with holding behind the target like yep. like that's an exaggeration yes, so. it's an exaggeration for practice you can't actually do that 
But if you know that you can do it in practice, you're much more likely to under pressure, not only select the technique, but pull it off, right? Yeah. So like this, this notion of practicing what you're afraid of until you're not afraid of it anymore, I, it's so kind of compoundingly powerful that um, you know, one of one of the many elements of practice that we could talk about, I guess. But. Yeah, yeah, because it all culminates in the feel and the trust at the end of the shot. And if you don't have that confidence, it's just another barrier for you, you know, to be able to achieve that. Right. You, you really have to you really have to let yourself feel that. If you are not confident about a bird, it's just it's just a little bit harder, a lot harder to get. Right. You know, and that's what wins a tournament is being able to do that more times than it is. Right. Yeah. Like yeah, you have that feeling like you need to unlock the right level of confidence and the right level of control. And you know, if you're confronted like with this 50 yard crosser here on this stand. And it, for, for a scorer, you got to be able to stand outside the box and say, "Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna let this one fly because I'm not, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna see any process. I'm not gonna see my barrel. All I'm gonna look at is I'm gonna look at the target, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna essentially be looking for the feeling that I know I need to have. And doing that under pressure when it counts is tough, unless you've done it many, many, many more times. Enough. Yeah, and that, that feeling is sometimes a risky feeling. It feels like you might be throwing away the target, but in effect, that's what you have to do sometimes yes. to actually hit the bird. Thought the facilities here were amazing. The staff have been amazing. Oh, yeah, the staff was incredible. I, I mean, Evan Sharp followed us around yesterday, put flash targets out for us, you know, moved some machines to, to create some shots. Like, it, the incredible level of hospitality here. And great targets. He said really, really, really good targets for us to practice. Yeah. A training trip down here just really to spend two days shooting the orange course, I think extremely worthwhile. Thanks, guys.